Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Sinu. Today, we're starting things off a little bit differently. I'm here in, a, you know, a bit of a real-time uh, view of the city. And uh, I've been doing a, a little bit of work off camera that I wanted to basically show you. So let me just zoom out. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but we have a new sound pack. So sirens don't sound as annoying as they used to. Uh, they sound a little bit better. Uh, I'm using the crass sound ambient sound pack. Uh, for some reason, I lost uh, the the ambient sound for like you know the forest and all those things. But uh, want to see if I can figure that out. Uh, in the meantime, however, let me show you what uh, one of the main main islands uh, of uh, Sinu looks like. I've been doing uh, some work off camera, like I said. I expanded these neighborhoods. They're obviously you know lacking a lot of detail, but uh, I try to did this. Uh, I try to do this sort of broken ish grid. And uh, so you have, you know, roads that are kind of like zigzagging across, uh, you know, across the island. And then as it approaches to this side, they get a little bit more straight. Obviously, uh, these roads are paved, but uh, this is just uh, to get all the fences in place. Because as you can see here, I've been setting up uh, the different plots. And uh, we're going to be putting down uh, houses in here. And obviously, we need to come in and add a lot of details. Uh, I was able to get it as far as, you know, adding uh, the decals here on uh, the road. So they're not 100% cover. You do still see, you know, the gravel from uh, below, but uh, it's pretty much uh, almost done. Uh, same over uh, over in this neighborhood, by the way. This one is pretty much complete, I would say. Uh, there's still a few things that I'm going to be doing uh, probably off camera here and there. For, for the most part, it's uh, I'm pretty happy with them. And... Uh, one of the biggest things that I wanted to talk about in this episode, and uh, this is probably also the reason why I wasn't able to post videos last week, is uh, is this. Let me actually go in uh, to here. I managed to get some decent rock assets. And uh, in fact, I'm so happy with how they turn out that uh, they're now, hopefully by the time you're watching this video, they're available in the Steam Workshop. So check the link in the description if you wanna be subscribed to them. Uh, it actually comes in two flavors. Uh, you see the one on the top is the dry rocks and the one on the bottom are the wet rocks. And they have like the shininess and everything else in there. So uh, let me show you how they look. In fact, let me show you how they uh, plop too. So break water. So these are the two that, that we have here. By the way, I haven't, at the time of this recording, I haven't yet published them to the Steam Workshop. I haven't done the thumbnails or anything. So this is just, uh, it's not gonna look like this. Uh, it's gonna have a description and everything else. But um, the asset will remain the same. And the way you plop them is, you basically wanna do, uh, you know, I, I did a lot of trial and error here. And uh, I realized that the best way to approach this is to go for the wet ones first and since this is a two by one asset it's uh to avoid repetition it's uh, a good idea to rotate them every once in a while so you can do something like this and by the way these are terrain conforming so as you can see here they will like contour to uh against uh your you know whatever the shape of your terrain is and um and also it doesn't have the hitbox on the water. So the water will actually flow freely against the rocks, which is uh, kind of a major pain point uh, with some of the rocks that are in, uh, in the workshop right now. Uh, the problem is if you don't have anarchy or, or uh, move it, uh, the rocks need to be placed on the water. So you're going to need so those mods in order to do what I'm doing right now. But uh, I'm, I'm guessing most of you watching this video who will get these rocks uh, are now going to find that uh, to be an issue. So what you can do is just something like this. Place all these rocks in this fashion. And then just simply, you know, grab, move it. Select, unselect everything. Actually, these are technically buildings. So you can do something like this. And, uh, you know, try to, like, align it as efficiently as you can. So something like that. And then, obviously, we're going to fill in uh, the gaps here with some of these rocks. These, are, by the way, are very low poly. So, in fact, I can show you real quick. Briac, uh, can't, I can't spell. Briac. Briac water. There we go. So these are the ones. Um, they're 448 tries for the uh, big version. Now the LOD, the LOD was the biggest problem before. So if you zoom out, you can see that there's still, I mean, obviously some on YouTube might come in, you know, not super detailed, but it's still pretty noisy 
uh, around the edges. So you can still see quite a bit of detail. And if I turn the LODs on, you can see that um, it's basically like flat polys that cast shadow. So even if you zoom out, you still see a lot of detail, which is uh, what you want. But at the same time, obviously, you get only 77 uh, tries, which is pretty good. In fact, when I removed all of my previous rocks and re started replacing them with this ones, like my frame rate actually increased by like two or three, which is, you know, pretty awesome. So uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, complete all these rocks over here and I'll resume in just a second. And this is what it looks like after just uh, a few minutes of, uh, you know, plopping and copying and pasting with Movid. Uh, I promise this is the last time I think I'm going to change these rocks. I know I did this three times already, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy with this design. And uh, I learned so much this last two weeks uh, getting uh, these assets uh, complete. Uh, I, I, I was working on SketchUp when I, when I started working on these assets. And um, later on, uh, Beast Google House and basically taught me Maya, uh, which uh, is very similar to a software that I used to use a while back in college, which was uh, 3D Studio Max. So importing all of my old SketchUp assets into Maya and cleaning them up and then getting them into the game uh, really sped up my process and also created a much you know better quality uh, product. However, uh, the asset was, was already modeled. I didn't do it from scratch. If I were to do it now from the very beginning, I uh, think things would look uh, much, much nicer, but I'm, I am happy with this, uh, the state of, uh, of the rocks. So I'm not going to change it. Um, these are going straight into the workshop and, uh, you can let me know what you think, but, uh, let me actually show you how they look like over here and do excuse the poor frame rate. I'm going to, I'm going to point the camera down so you can see a lot more detail. In fact, you know what, let's just turn the camera around too. So, uh, you can see if you're basically whole bunch of different angles and uh, I also want to give a quick shout out to Ronix he is the one who provided me the script that allows these rocks to not have the hitbox basically it's this is a water based uh, prop now or building in, in this case uh, so they don't have the hitbox and the water can basically flow through them no problem and that that really made them made these rocks like way more useful than they would otherwise be so thank you so much ronix all right so what else uh, do we need to do yes uh before we jump into a time lapse there's one more thing that i want to that i want to do and here let me let me show you this problem that i've been having so when you put the camera like this in this angle you can see that this boat is kind of like floating in the air and then on every one of these like entrances or gaps in between the different islands you can kind of see the horizon but the horizon is not like you know perfectly aligned it there's like a hole and it's i i really really hate that so what i did so here you can see a difference i i did some terraforming around the edges and you can see the boats now look like they're in uh, the water even though you can still see you know sort of the silhouette of these uh, islands as they go down but uh it definitely looks uh, much nicer than uh, this one, for example. Compare this one to this one. This hole is just awful. So what I'm gonna do next is, uh, I'm actually going to jump into a time lapse right now, and I'm going to basically show you how I fix that by terraforming just right underneath the water here on the edge of the map in the in the fogness um just to you know improve you know it's just like a little detail but it really really bugged me and i think uh, uh it's worth fixing so let me just uh hit uh, play on the music there we go and uh yeah let's jump into a time lapse so it actually took quite a bit of time and work to sort of get it right uh, obviously, we're looking at this sort of x-ray view of the water. Uh, none of this uh, land is actually visible from uh, from the outside. This only is visible uh, as you terraform, but uh, you'll see soon enough after I exit the, uh, the terraforming controls menu that everything sort of comes back to a uh, normal and uh, there's really no land kind of creeping through uh, the water. There's like no weird islands in the distance. And it really, uh, it really made that uh, sort of horizon bug uh, look a million times better, which is uh, something that was bugging me ever since I started working on the map and the map theme and everything else. And talking about map themes, I actually ended up 
toning down the color of the water. Uh, I know I talked about this in the, oh yeah, there's a tsunami that I was trying to prevent. Uh, by the way, in between saves, uh, I did flood the entire city and some buildings became abandoned. So I had to I had to go fix them. I don't think I caught that on camera, but it was kind of frustrating because uh, I was really short on time to get this video out. Uh, now that I'm actually done with all the recording, I can see that, uh, man, that was, uh, I, I did record quite a bit of footage, so we're, we're going to have a, a bit of a long episode on our hands. But uh, what I was saying before is that I did change the color of the water. I toned down the shade of blue. So it's, it's very subtle, actually. I think I might even take it uh, one step further, but uh, I'm pretty happy with, with how it looks uh, now. It's definitely nicer than before. It's much more usable, especially around uh, the uh, the breakwater rocks that I, uh, that I just uh, created that you just heard about, <laughs> uh, even though that was like two days ago for me. But uh, yeah, the... Um, if, uh, if all goes well, I'm probably going to update the theme in the workshop, just changing uh, the color of the water. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. It's it's so subtle, you probably didn't even know or, or even notice that uh, that was uh, changed. But uh, trust me, it, it really, really helps. And uh, I think it's going to make your cities a lot more realistic for the most part. Now, uh, another interesting thing that happened uh, this week was that City Skylands is now available for Xbox. Uh, it's definitely a dumbed down version of the game. Uh, obviously, if you're if you're a new City Skylines player and you just found this video on YouTube on the search results, uh, I'm I'm sorry to inform that it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to uh, get this uh, a look on on your uh, Xbox game. Uh, as far as I know, the Xbox game does not have any workshops of of any kind. So basically, all of the custom assets are basically on Steam and nowhere else, uh, unless you manually download them. But I don't think the game actually supports custom files at all. So it's been a while since I played uh, console games. Uh, I do have a, a PS4 that is just lying there and gathering dust. I never, I, I think I only played once, uh, but uh, I do enjoy PC games uh, for the most part. Uh, in any case, yeah, if you're uh, coming to to get ideas and tips for your cities, uh, maybe you'll get a, a couple, mostly on road layouts and things like that, but uh, definitely not. Uh, I don't think you're going to detail your Xbox game with uh, the little detail that I'm, you know, that I'm working on right now. So uh, in any case, you can just enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, it's still fun to watch, I guess. But uh, the, the next thing that I also want to talk about, I have, you know, like my little list here of things, is that King Leno uh, just uh, released uh, an Sinu specific asset that's uh, in the workshop. Obviously, I'm going to include the link in the description, but this is the first mosque that we are going to uh, include in this map. Obviously, it's not going to happen in this episode, but I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to start actually implementing uh, some of the assets that he put together because he also did a gas station, if you remember from a couple episodes ago. Uh, I did showcase that one, but uh, obviously the um, the gas station will be technically will be placed on another island, the, the island that's right next to this one. And um, one thing that I've been thinking a lot lately is how to approach uh, the expansion of, uh, of this city. So the thing is, this, uh, I mean, all, all the developments from the different islands will sort of have the same aesthetic for the most part. The neighborhoods will look the same. And um, my goal right now is to sort of have uh, a bit of a baseline where uh, this this island in particular can sort of withstand by itself. It has all the services it needs. Uh, there's an okay balance in terms of uh, population and things like that. And then my goal is to slowly move to the islands uh, next door, I guess, um, and do the same thing, you know. But um, the thing is that the... So, for example something that I wanted to mention. Uh, you know how I keep saying that uh, that I had this, this uh, backup island, the, the one that's uh, right next to this one has a whole bunch of buildings that I've been relying on that are not really designed at all. They're just plopped there. They're ugly, but they do provide with fire coverage, and police and uh, medical services and, uh, you know, the crematorium and so on and so forth. So 
My main goal is to get rid of all of those buildings, and we're actually really close to doing that, by the way. Uh, right now, just so you know, this island, which would be Hithadu, um, already has its own fire and police coverage. It uh, At the end of this episode, is going to have uh, school coverage for both elementary and high school, and I don't think I'm going to have universities here. I might add on a university, actually. I'm not 100% sure, but... Um, so it has those. Uh, it does have power, so it's uh, basically sustainable on that end as well. It does have uh, garbage collection, also important. And uh, the only thing that it doesn't have that I'm that I really want to tackle in the next episode is health, and uh, basically the switch uh, treatment. Which uh, we do have water pumps all over the city, but we do not have switch treatment, and that's uh, the biggest thing that right now it's on the other island. So hopefully. In the next episode, if I can get uh, you know enough built and uh, add a couple of facilities that will help us with those things, uh, we can maybe start you know expanding towards uh, towards uh, neighboring islands. I do want to start working on the airport. You know, not I'm not saying relatively soon, but uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm not I'm not expecting uh, you know filling all of the islands before I do the airport because uh, I I already amassed. Uh, a huge number of assets, uh, assets that I, I really want to start working on. I'm also waiting for Beast Google House and Custom Planes. He shared with me uh, on Skype the other day a few like, uh, you know, untextured models that are coming along really, really nice. So hopefully, um, we will have those on our hands soon. And uh, the thing that really worries me though is uh, repetition. So the thing is, most of this. Uh, most of the islands uh, in this project will have very similar looking uh, neighborhoods. And uh, these are pretty detailed neighborhoods. It's not the kinds of neighborhoods that I did before where you just zone and that's it. Uh, there's uh, a lot of buildings and there's a lot of props in between the buildings. And even though I'm, I'm obviously going faster because I already know what uh, what look I'm, I'm wanting to achieve, I'm definitely going faster when I'm building. But it obviously takes a long time, and uh, right now, what I think I'm going to do is sort of uh, dedicate a portion of each episode to doing sort of the same detail process. And, and you know, like there's going to be different things that will vary between episode and episode, but uh, I'm also going to mix those up with uh, you know unique buildings that I haven't done yet. So, for example, in this episode in particular, you're going to be seeing in a moment uh, a bit of industrial uh, complexes as well as a bunch of uh, commercial on top of what you already saw, uh, you know, as the as this episode uh, or as this time lapse segment started just a few minutes ago. But all of these uh, details that I'm adding right now, you know, like all those shady bushes and uh, the fences and everything else, it's something that we'll have to do over and over again multiple times. And it takes a long time. So I rather do it, you know, in small little segments on camera than me doing it 100% off camera. And you really don't want me to do that off camera for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, the most obvious one, is that uh, it will take me at least two, three weeks where there will be no videos simply because I'll be doing the same repetitive task over and over again. And that will be also the second reason, the fact that doing the same thing over and over again, it's not that much fun and uh, it almost feels like work. So I'd rather, you know, take things slowly, uh, enjoy the game and uh, sure, the videos might be a little bit repetitive, but I'm gonna do my best to mix it up with the unique builds so that uh, it's definitely more entertaining to see. And uh, talking about unique builds, uh, what I'm doing here is making my first custom park of uh, this project. And um, it's it's pretty simple, actually. There's uh, two pedestrian streets uh, or pedestrian paths that cross in the middle uh, where there's a little fountain uh, surrounded by both paths surrounded by the this pri privet, privé trees. It's a really awesome asset, but I don't know how to properly uh, spell it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm building this like custom playground using these uh, rock uh, tiles, I guess. Um, but uh, I've never done this, and I think it looked it looked amazing. Just creating a bit of a, you know, surrounding this uh, dirt patch where the actual uh, playgrounds will be. Obviously, putting a few you know 
uh, water fountains all over the place. And uh, in just a few moments, I realized that everything looked a little bit too dirty. So I went ahead and uh, changed the main paths to concrete, which, uh, I don't know, it made the park look a little bit nicer. Uh, I definitely uh, definitely went a little bit crazy there with the lights, so I toned them down a bit. But as you can see here, I'm just adding, uh, adding you know, random touches, uh, obviously trying to keep up with the same, uh, you know, vegetation aesthetic that uh, the surrounding neighborhoods do have. And I'm I'm using extensively uh, Pete Elmo's assets, who's been sort of taking the Steam Workshop by storm. In fact, I've been using his assets for, you know, since the beginning of Sinu. Uh, he did the first uh, coral assets uh, that I've been using. But lately he's been uh, uh, coming out with all sorts of uh, different types of grass clusters and trees and things. And most of them are like really low poly. So they look, they do look amazing. Some of them even contour to, uh, to the ground, like sort of the rocks that I make. And, uh, you definitely need to check out his uh, Steam uh, Workshop profile. I'm gonna include the link in the description of this video as well, because uh, you can't go wrong with those assets. He's he's doing an amazing job, and uh, if you're watching, man, seriously, um, keep keep it up. Uh, don't 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 stop because uh, they all look amazing. I can't right now. I can't keep up with all of his. Uh, he posts so many. I can't keep up with all the releases he's uh, been doing, but. Um, I'm actually trying to stick to the ones that I already know that are pretty amazing, but I do want to try others uh, just because uh, they they add so much variety to, to everything. So yeah, good job. Um, over here, what is this? You might be wondering. Well, I, I really need more warehouse assets. Uh, I don't think there are that many Rico warehouse assets. And I really want to use the farm uh, vanilla buildings that look really amazing, but they're bugged for Rico. Rico sort of doesn't work with them for some reason, and that hasn't been patched yet, as far as I know. So uh, I'm using uh, Beer Monkey's uh, farming sort of uh, warehouses that to me look like generic warehouses, uh, which you know I can use in, in many different situations, not necessarily uh, farming related. And I've, I've, I've used those before at the uh, microwave radio station plant thing that I did two or three episodes ago. So I really like the aesthetics of them. And I know he's been putting out a few more of those. So I, I forgot to grab them from the workshop, uh, but I'm definitely gonna do that in the next episode. And basically this whole mixed zoning thing, it's uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, during this uh, time-lapse, it's, uh, it really, I don't know. It really fits nicely in uh, this uh, in the middle of this neighborhood. So I'm trying to keep them closer to main arteries, like that paved road over there. And obviously, I sort of extended that uh, concrete road. So, you know, I'm expecting trucks and vans to drive heavily on this because, you know, in my mind, this factory or not this factory, but this facility uh, will be getting sort of the containers from uh, the harbor dumped in there and um you know those will be delivered to all the stores around uh, the island so it's kind of like a logistics center but uh you know appropriately sized for uh the population of uh, of this city and uh, right here on this corner i wanted to sort of add a bit more detail and uh, you know create some sort of separation between this facility and the rest of the neighborhood by putting down some some of these large bushes and you know mixed up with the smaller ones but uh, at the same time I don't know if you noticed we have this like super tall uh, barbed wire fence uh, that I, I I did this trick again with uh, you know by mixing it up with the uh, uh, you know the brick wall in this case uh, which I think that is a great combination because you can just create new designs for your fences right out of the box <laughs> and uh, you know, the reason behind all this like security is mainly because I'm thinking that this is where, you know, like expensive items will be shipped to, uh, you know, coming from uh, the docks all the way to here and the stores, like I said um, a moment ago, you know, like TVs, computers, things like that. Uh, there is some security, uh, I guess, that will require, be required at least to uh, sort of uh, keep an eye on all the things here and on the vehicles department I, I wanted to keep things rel relatively simple as you can see we only have a handful of trucks 
of you know of the smaller kind for the most part uh that i'm uh, those screen trucks i literally i'm gonna remove because they they look a little bit too beaten down and uh they yeah i don't think they will work very well for, for what we're trying to do here but these ones however the sim ones that are you know like larger vans almost uh are i think are perfect for this task and um I also put down an office building that uh, it's a vanilla building that I converted to Rico and uh, if you paid attention just a second ago, I use a prop it up to get rid of the ugly uh, big rotating 3D rotating uh, clown thing that was at the top. Oh my god. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Why would an office have that? But uh, it did and um, I'm happy that uh, prop it up exists that allowed me to get rid of it uh, So and now I can uh, and I know I mentioned this before but now I'm starting to use a lot more of the vanilla assets I wish there was a way to like completely get rid of every single prop uh, these kinds of buildings have uh, But in this case, I I was only able to replace it with like a small antenna that actually looks kind of nice So um, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal uh, but you know sometimes I wish that you could just simply get rid of everything that uh, is not the building itself. But, uh, you know, there's always a workaround. That's sort of my philosophy, I guess, with, with City Skylines. Uh, I On that corner, by the way, that you just saw there, just trying to, you know, make a little uh, parking lot for the employees. As But for the most part, as every other major building in this island, there's a bike rack because most people... Uh, supposedly, uh, I mean, I, I know for a fact that they do this in real life, but in this game, supposedly, they ride their bikes everywhere and, you know, motorcycles for the most part, I would say. Uh, unfortunately, there are no assets for that in the workshop, which if any asset creators are listening, we need more motorcycle and bike assets uh, props for the most part, because we do have some actual vehicles that uh, look like that, but we don't have any props. And uh, that we much much uh, much nicer addition uh, to uh, the game library uh, finally over here just adding a whole bunch of decals uh, as you saw a moment ago before I changed my mind and cut the clip uh, that uh, simply showcases uh, you know just you know fixes the repetition for the most part that's uh, taking place in that large span of concrete and uh, over here uh, and right now, as I record this, I realized that, uh, so I screwed up the footage, by the way, this whole segment is in like a completely different codec because I was trying to like record something quick to send to a friend, uh, but then I forgot to change the settings. So this whole segment of the video in Premiere right now, as I'm recording this, it's like literally like five frames per second. So that's uh, what happens when you use uh, H.264 instead of uh, better codecs, I guess. But, um, in, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do my best to describe what I'm seeing here. So basically I'm working on this uh, Gostum uh, police station slash fire station combo. And uh, this whole area, by the way, this uh, intersection here, there's going to be, uh, in just a moment, you're gonna see uh, a bit of a commercial district. And uh, I figured that it would be a nice spot for the police and uh, for the fire station as well. Obviously trying to keep this uh, very very simple and low key and low profile as well by having you know one and two story buildings uh, so that nothing sort of comes out you know as a super tall building like we did in previous episodes and I think uh, that actually looks uh, rather nice I also had to use prop it up there to remove the ugly you know rotating asset uh, there is one building that still has that I think it's like a squirrel with a donut I ended up leaving that one because that, that one, I mean, it was okay. I might come back and remove it later, but I, I thought it was like, you know, not a big deal at the time. Now I'm having second thoughts, but we'll see. Uh, I can't promise anything. I am going to, though, uh, have our first clinic, I think, right across the street from this uh, police station and fire station. And, uh, hopefully in the next episode, so stay tuned for that. Uh, one thing I did change over here as I was uh, looking at this is the, um, you know, the fence, because I was using, you know, a completely opaque uh, metal fence where you really can't see inside of uh, the construction. So I ended up changing that to just uh, a regular fence, the vanilla fence, that is actually very beautiful asset, uh, if you ask me. Uh, it's a little bit overused though but it does look really amazing. It's really detailed too, and it conforms to the ground. So, you know, 
it basically checks all the possible checkboxes uh, in my book. And uh, obviously here using uh, King Leno's uh, planters again to sort of uh, Add a bit more contrast to the uh, to the to the fence, though that is not just sitting there in the concrete. I think uh, it looks much nicer this way, and obviously adds so much more detail. One thing that I noticed, though, so I've been, uh, and I know I talked about this uh, even in during Arrowhead, uh, the last uh, episode of Arrowhead, and I've been doing or using this uh, types of road, the uh, small pedestrian road that doesn't have any parking lots on the parking spaces on the sides. So I've been using that extensively. The problem is that it's so narrow that cars like really cut the corners really short when they pull in to these uh, driveways. Uh, for the most part, I use them because of the driveways. So you can see right next to the house, there's like a little gap between the menu and the house where you know the, the, the curve kind of goes in. And I love that aesthetic. I think it really breaks the design and adds a ton of detail. And it's really, really simple to make. But uh, yeah, it comes out with, with that issue where cars simply just cut the corner and they drive through like a fence if you put the if you put it right next to it. So you gotta be careful with that, unless you know you don't care so much about that level of detail. Uh, in my case, I I do care, but at the same time, if I really have to mind all those things, I will never get a video out. So you know, I have to find a middle point uh, or middle ground where I can you know, where enough is enough. Like, okay, it looks cool. If I take a screenshot, will it look good? Okay, that's when I say, okay, it's done. <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily have to function 100% properly. Uh, as long as it serves its purpose, its purpose. Uh, so in, in the case of a police station, I do want cars to, you know, spawn in and out and to look okay. So that's, I guess that's the limit. In, in my book, that's uh, as far as I'm willing to go in terms of detailing. And uh, over here, again, just wanted to change things up a bit. As you can see from the um, the RCI indicator at the bottom of the screen, uh, we still have a ton of demand for commercial and residential. And this is uh, before I started the simulation, all the factories that I did up until this point are yet not, are, are not running according to the game. As far as the game knows, uh, yeah, not, none of that is happening. So I decided to create this facility, which obviously looks a little bit newer. And it's uh, in fact an office uh, complex. It's, uh, I don't think it's the first office in this city. Do we, do we add another office here? Or at least like an office type building thing? I don't think we have. Uh, I added because it looked industrial enough that it doesn't actually look like an office. Uh, I don't, I mean, we will have other types of offices in the city, but not in neighborhoods like this, probably more of a downtown uh, areas or around the airport or places like that. But in this case, uh, it looked industrial enough that I figured it would be, uh, you know, like a nice sort of small company that happens to have that big tank for whatever reason. And uh, obviously has uh, some uh, delivered trucks parked outside, uh, a bit of an entrance on both streets, and just some oil stains because, well, a lot of cars uh, are parked there all the time and they leak oil. <laughs> I guess that will be the the, the reason why. Uh, I'm, I'm having uh, today, as I'm recording this, this time lapse, uh, I mean, it's definitely a longer time lapse than I'm used to. So I'm, it's not like I'm running out of things to say, but I can, I'm trying to like come up with different words to describe sort of the same things that I've been uh, saying over and over again. So it's kind of an interesting challenge for me. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, I think it makes things a bit more interesting when I do it that way. Uh, I, and at the same time, I also don't want to just play music and not say anything. I think it's uh, way more fun to watch a video where even if I rumble about the randomest things, it's still more fun than just simple music. Actually, let me know in the comments. Maybe that's just me, but uh, that's how I feel about it. Maybe, maybe you don't, so do let me know uh, what you think. But uh, as uh, we're still, you know, kind of approaching the end of the time lapse, uh, what was left to do at this point was to add a, a few more houses. Uh, definitely as we move towards, uh, in this case, the left of the screen, we're going to start having a bit more of a dense neighborhood. So uh, before, as we were like near that little creek that we built in the previous episode, things uh, were a little bit sparse, you know, like houses were not super tight as you can see right now and i wanted to like start you know 
making things a little bit more dense. And uh, this is the last part of this time lapse, like I was saying a moment ago, where I'm basically building the uh, one of the biggest schools in the city. That is actually going to be both an elementary school and a high school. And it's going to be composed of multiple different buildings. This big elementary school is uh, from Ronix, if I am not mistaken. These smaller ones are from uh, King Leno, if I'm also not mistaken. And uh, there's, uh, I obviously didn't have time to do all the detailing, so I'm gonna leave that for the next episode, but I did put in place uh, most of the main buildings and I'm also gonna start the simulation so that uh, we can start educating people because we do have, uh, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode, that was like two days ago, so I can't really remember what I said. However, um, I'll repeat it again, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, we were having a lot of uh, crime issues and I think for the most part, not just lack of police, uh, police coverage, but also the fact that people weren't educated was causing that. Uh, there's a lot of sick people as well, so I think Hopefully, now that we have the schools and everything else, and hopefully, and then by the time uh, we, you know, and then we, we get to the next episode and we put together the the clinic and everything else, we might be able to start uh, fixing all of those issues that, uh, yeah, that are yet to be tackled. And as we approach the end of the time lapse, I want to be quiet for a little while, let you enjoy the music, and I'll resume in just a moment with some uh, very eye candy cinematics. And with that, it's time uh, to put an end to this episode. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving this video a like. It really does help a lot and it's very much appreciated. Also, if you're new to the channel, I want to encourage you to go click the big red subscribe button. That way you're notified immediately after one of my videos comes out. In the description, you're going to find all of the links that I mentioned during uh, this episode, as well as the playlist and my various social media accounts. But that's it. That's all that I have to say for now. I want to thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.